Happy Easter, everybody. My name is Colin Acaso. I'm the Director of Evangelization and Service Outreach here at St. Patrick's Cathedral. And we are so excited to bring you this new series on divine mercy, on divine mercy. Now, it's very interesting. The word mercy itself, it comes from the Latin word misericordia. Literally translated means to give one's heart to one who is in misery. How beautiful is that? Mercy itself means to give one's heart to one who is in misery. So divine mercy in a very real and beautiful and powerful way is Jesus Christ pouring out and giving his sacred heart to all of us who are in misery. And I don't think I need to explain to you, we're living in some pretty miserable times. And this message particularly is very important for me personally. I have something known as OCD, really misunderstood out there. And I don't mind sharing a little bit about it. One way I like to explain it is that we don't realize but the human mind has many thoughts a day as the human heart has beats. Our minds are constantly going. With somebody without my condition, those thoughts usually just go across like clouds in the sky, like no big deal. You don't even realize what we're thinking. But with somebody with my condition, what could happen is that one of those thoughts can get lodged into, into your thought process. And depending on how bad it is, that one thought, that one fear, whatever it is, can get buried down deep into your emotional state. And it can cause tremendous fear, tremendous anxiety, and tremendous depression. So throughout my life, in many different ways, I've experienced tremendous fear, anxiety, and depression. So I know misery in a very particular way. That's one particular reason why I love this devotion so much, because I know the more misery I feel, the closer the crisis to me. Because it literally means, remember, to give one's heart to one who is in misery. And also don't mind sharing with you recently, I just had open heart surgery which was pretty crazy. And, you know, I was born with this bicuspid aortic valve that they needed to get fixed. So just months ago, they had to do an open heart surgery. As you can imagine, that was, it was pretty terrifying at times of what was gonna happen, how the surgery was gonna go. So I've experienced misery in many different ways. And I know you are going through something. We're all going through something. And this is why our message of mercy is so important, that we're living in the time of mercy. St. John Paul II would talk about, while he was alive, that we were living in the worst times in the history of the world. There's more darkness, more evil happening now than ever. And that was when he was alive. It's only gotten worse. And this is a shocking statement coming from him, because if you know anything about his background, this was the guy who grew up during the Nazi occupation in Poland. And when he was a young priest, the Communist Reformation, right after that, comes in. I mean, this guy saw evil and darkness straight in the face, and he wasn't talking about that time, but our time as the greatest evil. Now, should this cause us to despair, be upset? No, because we have to take the math of the gospel very seriously. And what does St. Paul say? Where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. Where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. That means the darker it is, the more sin, the more evil. Heaven is not going to be outdone by that. There are graces at a potency and level like never before in the history of their church coming into the world through the sacraments like never before in the history of the church. The darker it is, the brighter it is. The worse it is, in a sense, the better it is. So we've got to learn how to tap into the tremendous amount of graces that God is pouring out right now for our time. And that's what we hope to do with this series. Because this is the promise. This is the promise of the gospel. This is what it means to be living in the time of mercy that John Paul II revealed to us, that St. Faustina Kowalska revealed to us in the Divine Mercy message, is that we're living in the time of mercy. What does that mean? Mercy itself, it says in Catechism 1846, this is what the Catechism says. It says the gospel itself, the gospel, is the revelation in Jesus Christ of God's mercy to sinners. All right, divine mercy. What is mercy? It's the very center of our faith. It's why Christ came. It who he, it's who he is. So when I'm talking about mercy, I'm not talking about some secondary devotion or some side thing that the Catholic Church is offering. No. Again, it says the gospel itself is the revelation in Jesus Christ of God's mercy to sinners. Divine mercy is the gospel. It gets to the heart of the gospel. And we can see this being saturated throughout the Bible. Right, of God's mercy to sinners. I won't say where exactly it's coming from, but we all know these, these scripture quotes. Jesus says in Luke, for the Son of Man has come to seek and save what was lost. Jesus answered, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. 
I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call righteous but sinners. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 persons who do not need to repent. And I can go on and on about Jesus' example of mercy throughout all of the Bible. Now the message of divine mercy comes from St. Faustina Kowalska. Jesus himself started to appear in an extraordinary way to St. Faustina. So St. Faustina would see and hear Jesus much the way that you're seeing and hearing me right now. Obviously it's an extraordinary grace. And what was the message he wanted to deliver? Was his message of mercy. Now it's nothing new. Everything that we have for the deposit of faith, everything we have for necessary for salvation has been given to us already by the church to the last disciple. So the question is, how can we tap into the tremendous amount of graces that God is pouring out in our time now, in the time of mercy? Well, first and foremost, of course, through the sacraments. Please live a sacramental life. Go to confession, receive the Eucharist, spend time in adoration. This is where we physically encounter the love of the Father, the Father's heart, and the amazing amount of graces that God wants to pour out. And through this series, you're gonna learn how to tap into these tremendous graces, also through the Divine Mercy devotion, through the Divine Mercy message. And so each, each Sunday, we're gonna reveal a new aspect of what God revealed through St. Faustina Kowalska about particularly the Divine Mercy message. And if you can remember this little word, and really this little bird, as an acronym, Finch, F-I-N-C-H, you can remember how to tap into the tremendous amount of graces. So we'll do an episode on the Feast of Divine Mercy, F. Then we'll do an episode on the Image of Divine Mercy, I. Then we'll talk about Novena of Divine Mercy. Then the Chaplet of Divine Mercy and the Hour of Divine Mercy. And this acronym, I didn't come up with it. There's an order in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, the Marian Fathers, who have been entrusted with this message of divine mercy, and they came up with this acronym. So again, Finch, Feast, Image, Novena, Chaplet, Hour. Now, just to give you a little taste, what's coming up is the Feast of Divine Mercy Sunday. It's always the Sunday after Easter. And this is what Jesus says about this feast. He says, my daughter told the whole world about my inconceivable mercy. He says, I desire that the Feast of Mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls. He says, the soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. This is a huge promise for the time of mercy that we're living in right now. The theological understanding that we get from the Stockbridge Fathers up in Massachusetts, who've been entrusted with this, is saying that if we go to confession before Divine Mercy Sunday with the intention of receiving this grace and then receiving the Holy Eucharist on Divine Mercy Sunday, with this intention of this grace, that we'll receive not only complete forgiveness of sins, but and punishment. Meaning that if we were to die shortly after, we'd basically skip purgatory. It's a grace that's being offered in the time now, in the time of mercy. So I invite you and I encourage you to please go to confession with the intention of receiving this promise before Divine Mercy Sunday. And of course, it's Sunday, you should be going to Mass anyway, right? To receive the Eucharist that day with this intention and receive this awesome promise that God is offering for the time of mercy that we're living in here and now. And so next episode, this coming Sunday, we will talk more about Divine Mercy Sunday. Stay tuned.